Let's get into God's word this morning. And the title of the message is, When Godliness is Our Goal. When Godliness is Our Goal. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22 from the Passion Translation. It says, run as fast as you can from all the ambitions and lusts of youth and chase after all that is pure. Whatever builds up your faith and deepens your love must become your holy pursuit. And live in peace with all those who worship our Lord Jesus with pure hearts. The Apostle Paul is giving direction to Timothy and also to the church. When he instructs Timothy, he instructs Timothy not only for Timothy's personal life and walk, but also to be imparted to the church. Amen? And so, the key here this morning is that he directs or commands Timothy saying, run as fast as you can from all the ambitions and the lusts of youth. This is a word of caution, a word of warning. What does it mean to lust? It means it, it's a strong desire and it's an intense craving for something. For example, to desire that which is forbidden. A longing for evil. To covet what belongs to someone else. Or strive for things, persons, or experiences that are contrary to the will of God. So the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, be away, flee, flee. He does not say, stand there. And say, I am going to be safe, but it doesn't matter what my environment is like. He says, you get out from that environment. Do not associate with anyone who influences you to lust after the world. We live in this world. Amen. We are called to live in this world. As long as the Lord permits us to live here. We are called to live in the world. But Jesus made it very clear not to be of the world. And so Paul is writing to Timothy saying, you're a young man. Be careful. There would be many temptations that would come your way. One of the ways the enemy wants to enter and get a foothold is by tempting people. The world that we live in is full of temptation. There are so many hoardings and so many advertisements that you see that are more than selling the product along with that is very tempting in nature. And so Paul is cautioning Timothy and the church to keep away from the lust of the world. Why? Because that lusting would take them away from living a godly life. Many of us have aim and goals in life. It is vital. We must. Without having a goal, without having an aim, we don't know where we are going. And so, if our goal is to grow in godliness, not only live a godly life, but grow in godliness, we will learn to flee from every temptation that the enemy throws at us. It might not necessarily be an image. It can also be a thought. It can be a thought that the enemy is wanting us to give in or succumb to so that he could influence us to do something that is contrary to the will of God. And so, if Paul could caution Timothy, the one who was filled by the Holy Spirit, how much more should each one of us be cautioned because we are called to live a godly life. The last song that we sang is about the holiness of God. Holy, holy. 
are you lord god almighty you know something about our relationship with god i do not want you to forget is that not only is he holy but he has called us to be holy and christ living in us makes us holy amen i don't want you to, to look at yourself as an unholy person we are holy we need to grow in it we are called to live a godly life and grow in godliness so the first caution that paul gave timothy and timothy gave to the church and and the holy spirit gives us is that we must flee from everything that tries to steal us away from growing and pursuing a godly life what is your goal in life What is your goal in life? Oh you will say I want to glorify God. I want to serve his purposes. Yes. That's that's good. But we must focus on living a godly life. Why? Because somebody may never read a bible but they're reading your life. They're reading your life. You are that living testimony. You are that living epistle who is walking and talking and rising up and sitting down and going out and coming they are reading your life they are watching you don't be afraid don't be this watching is not to destroy you this watching is not to attack you this watching is god permitted so that you will walk carefully You don't swing lanes on a single track road. You know what happens if you try swinging? You know some drive we got we got in this nation six tracks, eight tracks. Some of them keep, you know. I call them the dancing queen. There's no abba, his name is not abba, the dancing queen. and they get themselves in trouble and they put others in trouble too you know the walk that god has called us to jesus said the path is narrow it's not easy but his scripture also reminds us that we can do all things through christ jesus who strengthens us point number 1 this morning god desires or god's desire is to see us grow up How many parents want to see their children grow up? All of us. All of us want to see. God wants to see us grow up. Maybe in these 9 months of the year that have gone by, we have measured some things in life. How much did I put on? How much did I lose? How does my bank account look like? <laughs> you must have thought about it. You must have measured How many of us have measured our spiritual growth? How many of us have found it or thought about it that it is so important to measure our spiritual growth? You know something our heavenly father loves to see us grow as sons and daughters. The word of God calls us to to constant maturity and it is also a reminder of god's desire to see each one of us growing up to mature in his grace and be strengthened to resist every temptation and so the holy spirit desires to work in our life to a measure that we have never known before It is vital for us to be content in life. Now when I say content in life it does not mean stop believing God for provision. What I mean to say is that we need to be happy with the lot and the portion God has given us. But when it comes to our walk with him we should keep hungering and thirsting for more. And that is what the Holy Spirit creates in us. What is your desire this morning? Do you want to know Jesus more? We sang J E S U S. 
There is power is him, healing is him, deliverance is him, salvation is him, provision, protection is everything that we need in his name. But the question this morning is, do I really desire to know him more? Why? Because he desires to reveal himself more. So that you and I can be strengthened as sons and daughters. We can resist every work of the enemy. As we choose to walk in humility before God. The word of God reminds us the book of James. Resist the enemy and he will flee. There is, there is power experience through obedience. You want to experience the power of God? It will come by obedience. When we choose to walk in humility, that means we cherish relationships, number one, with God and with one another. When we value our relationships with one another and we walk in humility, we don't succumb to what the enemy is throwing at us. Then we have the authority to resist the enemy. And the Bible says, the enemy shall flee. You will not fall to temptation as you choose to yield yourself to the power of the word of God. For when you and I yield ourselves to the power of the word of God, we will speak the word of God. Jesus confronted the enemy using scriptures. And you and I need to speak, to declare the word of God in every situation. When the enemy comes in, putting, putting doubt, putting temptation, you and I need to speak the word of God. This mind within me is the mind of Christ Jesus. Sin shall not rule in me. Hallelujah. One way to resist temptation is to flee from it. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 calls us first to flee and then to pursue. Two very important things to do. Number one, to flee. Number two, to pursue. What does it call us to pursue? It calls us to chase after all that is pure. What are we chasing after this morning? This fleeing and pursuing, it reminds us this morning that throughout our lives, we are either moving from or towards something that summons our interest. What was, what was Paul the apostle telling this young man Timothy? Listen to this very carefully. What he actually meant to say Timothy, you are either chasing or being chased. You got it? He's telling Timothy, you are either chasing or you are being chased. Be careful. When godliness is our goal, we begin to pursue such great values that comes from a born again lifestyle that we have in and through Christ. What a privilege we have that we are not alone. We, we, are, we are together. It, it, it feels so good. It's so good to see brethren dwell in unity because this is a place of commanded blessing. But then we're going to even walk away from this place. We are, some of us are, are, are in families, some of us go on our jobs and out and we find ourselves alone. But the truth of the matter is that we are never alone because the Holy Spirit lives in us. And so wherever we are, we are called to grow in godliness. So when godliness becomes our goal, number one, righteousness is what is seen, our correct standing before God that is demonstrated towards others. Three things will happen and I'm going to say, when we pursue godliness and when godliness becomes our goal, number one, our lifestyle is that we live a righteous lifestyle. Please don't say that you are not worthy. 
Why do you want to say you're not worthy when God made you worthy? He's made you worthy. Talk about who you are now, not what you were. Who are you now? Come on, somebody speak. Who are you now? Yes, you're a new creature. You're a son. You're a daughter. You're not nobody. And so I want you to know a righteousness is not from 11 to 12:30 at a service. Righteousness is a life that we live. He has made, Christ living in us has made us righteous. Amen. And so it helps us to grow in godliness. To be more God sensitive. To be more Holy Spirit sensitive. Amen. Number one, righteousness. Number two, faith. Thorough persuasion and reliance upon God, depending upon God, that is manifested towards others. Our relationship with God because of our standing with God. Number two, our faith because faith without action is dead. You see, in everything, as we grow in godliness, we don't just grow in relationship with God, we grow in relationship with one another. If somebody said they are right with God and it doesn't matter how they are with others, they are mistaken. They have created their own God and they have their own Bible. When we say, we claim that we love God, we must, it has to be manifested by our love for one another. A godly life is not a gossiping life. Our mouth doesn't open to gossip. Our mouth doesn't open to slander. Our mouth doesn't open to judge. We leave it to God. God has not made you and I a consultant. He's consultant to judge people. He has called us to worship Him. He has called us to bless others. How can we bless others when others look at Christ in us? They'll be blessed. They'll say, I want, man, I want what do you have? What do you have? Who do you have? I want to live the life that you are living. Hey, listen, I have made godliness my goal. People come to this part of the world and they make money their goal. Some of them want to just enjoy life here because this is a zone nobody knows. They are away from everybody. Nobody knows. Any lifestyle is okay. But listen, if you know Jesus, there's only one lifestyle that you are called to and that is kingdom lifestyle. No other lifestyle. And that is why if godliness is our goal, then we choose to know that we, live, we are called to live a righteous life and Jesus is our righteousness who has made us complete in Him. Number two, that we are people of faith. We don't speak negative words. What will happen? When will it happen? Why me? No. My God is able to do it. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but I choose to prophesy over you that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ever ask or imagine because His mighty power keeps working in your life. My God is able. The God whom you worshipped a few moments ago, He is able to do much more than you can ask or think or imagine because He has called you to live a godly life, a life that is pleasing to Him. Saying, Lord, I will not touch anything that is unclean. You paid such a great price for me. You are preparing me for the greater works. Hallelujah. I've been called out of darkness into the kingdom so that I will manifest your glory. I will live a righteous life. I will live a life full of faith. And as I close, a life that is full of your love. Full of your love. Compassionate affection towards God. Listen, as you see on your screen, that is revealed towards others. You love the Lord? I know this church loves the Lord. Continue to express it by loving one another. Let me, let me say this. That includes who are a little tough to love. 
that includes some who are a little tough at times yet it is the love it's not your love as we grow in godliness we grow in love and you would say to yourself my if i weren't who i was today oh, i would give him or her a mouthful a heartful a mindful but it's only the love of jesus that has made me walk every extra mile because godliness is my goal people have come here money is their goal name is their goal fame is their goal social security is their goal and to gather more assets is their goal but you know something we have been called into the kingdom and we need to grow in godliness the holy spirit is at work in our lives the more we choose to spend time with our abba father the more we will become like him we will not struggle with the enemy he says you were a sinner you did this you did that you failed he said you are a liar in the name of jesus get out i am the son and daughter of the most high god jesus paid the price for me his righteousness is my portion i live the life of faith i don't doubt i don't fear and number 3 i love unconditionally as my abba father loves me and i choose to grow in godliness devotion to grow as you learn to depend upon the holy spirit's life in you through his indwelling presence and the gifts that he has given you the spiritual gifts i want you to learn to depend upon it i'm going to pray right now as i close and i would say church be strong in his grace and this morning draw deeply from his power so that you and i can accomplish his purposes father in the name of jesus this morning i pray that the power of your spirit would quicken every word that this congregation has heard that if anything else was anyone's goal that there would be a shift this morning a reshuffle a reprioritizing so that growing in godliness would be our prime goal to grow christ like so that through our lives many more will see jesus and many more will desire to experience his saving grace and their lives will never be the same again i speak your shalom upon this congregation and this is what i speak even from this apostolic anointing let there be a holy spirit encounter today and throughout this week that will draw that will strengthen and prepare for a great work ahead in Jesus name amen god bless you